Alleluia, Christ is risen. Glory to the Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in 
those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 104. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here move the ships, and there is that fire one, which you have made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. May his words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Our second reading today is from Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Thanks be to God. In the Father, and the Father is in me. 
The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father who will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Pentecost brings us to a moment when we can happily and joyfully say to one another, Happy birthday. Happy origin story. Happy beginnings. This is what we call Pentecost. The launching of the church into the world. The story Luke tells in this week's lectionary, the Holy Spirit descended on 120 believers in Jerusalem, a metropolitan city in every sense of the word. We are told that people from all over the Aegean Sea and the Mediterranean had gathered for an annual feast celebrating the spring harvest. And for the Jews, celebrating the revelation of the law at Mount Sinai. And so, from every walk of life, from every country and culture in the known world at that time, Pentecost, all of those strange languages, all of those strange cultures gathered in Jerusalem, Jews and Greeks and Gentiles. We are told that the Spirit empowered these 120 individuals to testify to God's great deeds. The Spirit emboldened the Apostle Peter to preach to a bewildered crowd of skeptics. Furthermore, we are told that there were 3,000 converts in one day as a result of that preaching. It really is a birthday story like no other. It is full of wild details that challenge the imagination. Tongues of fire Rushing winds, accusations of public drunkenness. To put it bluntly, God showed up 50 days after Jesus' resurrection and threw the world an unforgettable party. 
But God didn't run for that. God gave his followers. God gives us a clear and startling picture of what Christ's body on earth should look like. None of the Pentecost story happens within the confines of an institutional building. None of the Pentecost story happens to a secluded tribe of early believers. The Pentecost story happens to the gathered world in Jerusalem in this particular moment. Luke, the historian, historian says in Acts, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And at this sound of a multitude of languages, the crowd gathered, and of course, they were bewildered because each of them heard his or her own language, their native tongue, how amazing is that? It's beyond comprehension. When the Holy Spirit came, the Spirit didn't restore humanity to a common language. <coughs> the Spirit declared all languages holy and equally worthy of God's stories. And the coming of the Spirit of Pentecost, the Spirit in Jerusalem on a particular day in history wove diversity and inclusiveness into the very fabric of the church. The Spirit called the people of God to be at once the one and the many. We all know that a language holds far more than the sum of its grammar, vocabulary, and syntax. Languages carry the full weight of their respective cultures, histories, psychologies, and spiritualities. To speak one language as opposed to another is to orient oneself differently, to hear differently, to process and punctuate reality differently. There is no such thing as a perfect translation. What does it mean that the Holy Spirit empowered first Christians to speak in an unmatched diversity of languages. For me, in this particular moment, I believe that God was saying, in effect, that His church, from its very inception, must honor the boundless variety and creativity of human voices. God was proclaiming the great deeds of God in every language. Not because proclaiming the great deeds of God in every language is progressive and fashionable, or because the church must be politically correct, but because God's deeds, God's revelation, God's work demands diverse stories and narratives. The crowd, we are told, was baffled and confused, not by the message itself, but baffled that God would condescend to speak to them in their own 
mother tongue. They were astonished that God would welcome them so intimately with words and expressions hearkening back to their childhoods, their neighborhoods, their birthplaces, their beloved towns and villages, countries, and cultures of origin. As if to say, this spirit-drenched place, this new birth, this church, this new body of Christ is yours. It belongs to you. To all of you. You don't have to feel like an outsider here. We speak your language. Come in. Come in and feel at home. It is no small thing that the Holy Spirit loosened tongues on the birthday of the church. In the face of difference, God compelled his people to engage. From day one, the call was to press in, linger, listen, and listen some more. Learn the language of heartbreak. Learn the language of hunger. Learn the language of anger and rage. Learn the language of homelessness. Learn the language of food insecurity. Learn the language of not being able to make ends meet. Learn the language of others. Because here's the truth. No matter how passionately I disagree with another person's opinion and beliefs, I cannot disagree with another's experience. Your experience, her experience, their experience, something that I must learn through listening. Once I've learned to hear and speak your story in the words that matter most to you, then I have a stake I never had before. I can no longer flourish at your expense. I can no longer abandon you. David Brooks, writing last week, about the carnage of gun violence in America, writing about the decay and breakdown of American morality, says this, moral behavior doesn't start with having the right beliefs or the right politics or the right position. Moral behavior starts with an act. The act of seeing the full humanity of other people. He continues, moral behavior is not about having the right intellectual concepts in your head. He declares it's about seeing other people with the eyes of the heart. Seeing them in their full experience, suffering with their full suffering, walking with them on their path. Morality starts with the quality of attention we cast upon another. If Jesus Christ comes to mind, when you hear those last words, I believe it is the right image. Casting quality, quality of attention upon another. With the eyes of the heart. 
quality of attention. Do we take the time to pay that kind of attention to the other? What a difference it makes when we can say to those around us who are receptive to sharing their language, the language of their experience, tell me your story. Share your story with me. I want to hear it. Oh, I've got the time. Take as much time as you need. Share your story with me. Can we hear what the Spirit is saying to these people? You know, whether we're paying attention or not, God is doing something new. And we can be a part of it. We can be the one. And we can be the many. We can be on fire for the healing of the world. Oh, dear Lord, let it be. Let it begin to be. Amen. Josh, 
Mark, Black and Susan, Mona, Michael, Jenny, TK, Carol, Nancy, Pearl, Mai, Lisa, Vicky, Phyllis, David, Bill, Mallory, Amy, Steve, Kendall, Virginia, the Green family, Carla, Linda, Andrew, Avery, Avery Sandra, Susan, Judy. Pray for our animal friends, Jeff. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life and those for celebrating birthdays. Cecilia and Greg. For those celebrating anniversaries, Emmanuel and Marilyn. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially. We praise you for your saint to have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints of heaven and of earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer. To know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, I, 
I, I want you to know that, uh, you know, being away is a good thing because, at least for me, you know, it makes me uh, sort of take a, a survey of, of what I'm thinking for, you know, like like Cannon Avenue versus I-65. <laughs> But, but furthermore, I, you know, it makes me miss you when I'm away. Um, I enjoy being with you and uh, being a part of your life and uh, learning the language, learning each other's language is, uh, is very, very good. We have uh, so much to be thankful for. You know, this is one of those days when it is, uh, for me, not easy to gather up my gratitude for this great Thanksgiving. Um, you know, having a daughter who teaches first and second graders who has been on the edge of horror for the last couple of weeks and who shares that deep, deep fear and anxiety about what we're still in. They still have another week of bridging a circle identified with a bar of over and over again. And, uh, so when we come to the altar with a great Thanksgiving, we, we are thankful for all of us. It is tempered by a great pain, a great heartache for the most vulnerable in our society. Children, elderly, those who have been targeted most recently. So, I, I, I share that because um, some of us will come and get all the day with tears and uh, fear. I can stand with this. And, uh, and, I, and I believe that's the reality that we celebrate this year. Is that, of course, we do the very same thing at a funeral. We celebrate the life of someone who's been taken from us. In some cases, too early. In all cases, beyond being able to prepare ourselves. And I have that same view. Unfathomable. Unfathomable. I can't wrap my mind and heart around it. So, I'll do a job today. We have to do for you. Four or five. I'll do a job. Say thank you.
Continue our worship now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The fulfillment of this true promise, the Holy Spirit came down this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples, to teach them, to lead them into all truth, uniting people to many tongues and confession of one faith, giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sit in this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Hallelujah. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek peace. Hallelujah. Dear people of God, these are the gifts of God for all of you. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you. Trust in Him. Have faith in Him. And know that in the darkness of times, Christ is with you.